Richard, good afternoon to you. I find you in the UK today. Before we talk about the illegal trade, has it been firmly established, that link between uh, pangolins and COVID-19? How much do we know at this point? Uh, no, in one word, it hasn't been firmly established, but I think there's a lot of compelling evidence and most scientific opinion does think there is a connection between pangolin and COVID-19. In answering that, I must point out that the first SARS epidemic in 2002, I think it was, um, that was sourced by most people to civet, civet, called civet cats. They're not cats, but called civets. Um, and still here we are 20 years later, and that is still not 100% accepted by science. So I'm afraid I don't think pangolins will ever 100% uh, be accepted as the source of this outbreak. But my suspicion, and I think the suspicion of most scientists is that they are the source, the Malayan pangolin. Jeremy, if I could just go back, um, you said pangolin's scales of justice. It's actually, I'm afraid, pangolin scales of injustice. So these are the most perfect mammals on the planet. And that little preposition, Richard, is absolutely critical. And I do apologize for that <laughs> scales of injustice. Let's get that absolutely right. In that respect, then, let's talk about the numbers, these scales of, of, of injustice. When it comes to trafficking, the numbers are fairly alarming and extraordinary, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely extraordinary. I mean, Ray Janssen, um, Professor Ray Janssen was telling me, and I put this in the book, actually, that in 2019, 97 tons. Now, these scales, as you can imagine, Anglers covered in scales, scales weigh very little. So 97 tonnes of scales is a lot of dead pangolins. 97 tonnes intercepted, leaving Africa for the Far East, actually going through Nigeria. That was estimated to be 160,000 animals. Now, Ray and others on the, on the front line of this fight, they think that probably only about 10% is intercepted. So I mean, just think how horrifying that is. If that's right, only 10% is intercepted, that's one and a half million pangolins leaving Africa for Asia every year. Are there greater efforts, Richard, I wonder, at policing and containing the problem, or is this uh, simply uh, uh, got so big that it's, it's, it's almost I I impossible to monitor? Well, I was in Laos and Vietnam um, on, a, on a project, and pangolins were part of the project. Um, and I was absolutely staggered and horrified um, at the ease with which I could buy illegal products, like, for example, pangolin meat, pangolin scales, and live whole pangolins. Now, these countries are members of a thing called CITES. They've signed up to international uh, conventions, and these are illegal products. So. Be a Westerner was able to walk in, a tourist, you know, no special introductions, walk in off the street to shops and restaurants and, and openly buy illegal products. Now, if I can do it, the police in those countries can also see what's going on. So I'm afraid that a blind eye was all too often being, being turned to, to this trafficking. And the other thing that I found fascinating and horrifying was that there's kind of an established price structure I was told $300 for meat on several occasions, um, $3,000 for a kilo of scale. So it's almost as if the sort of international criminal syndicates running this had done price fixing, because I found the same information in, in various other publications in the last few months. So this is organized crime, and it's highly organized. And at the end of it, it's a price fixed situation mm. with the poor old Berlin bearing the brunt. Richard, it's concerning when you use the phrase uh, blind eye when it comes to law enforcement. Are you implying uh, collusion here or is it simply because of other priorities, maybe a lack of money, a lack of, of, of good intelligence, uh, a lack of resources? Okay, I, I can't definitively answer that and I certainly don't want to start throwing accusations around. But let me put it to you that if I walk past a shop and in the shop window is a bottle saying tiger wine. If I can see that, so can a policeman. And tiger wine is an illegal product because it's illegal to trade tigers. So, you know, if someone like me can easily go and buy products that are supposed to be illegal, then I don't think it can be a lack of, of information or intelligence. I think that um, maybe it's a lack of resources, maybe, 
um, but Vietnam did not look to me like an unresourced country. So um, I think maybe it's just, at the most innocent level, maybe it's just not being taken seriously enough. Having said that, there's very good news from Vietnam because this whole COVID-19 thing has brought the consumption of wildlife right to the surface. And Vietnam have put new laws in place, and it really does look as if they're making big efforts to police them. So that's a huge step for someone like me uh, when uh, over 100 million people now uh, are involved in, mm. in, in you know, not consuming this. A big market is gone. Let me just uh, slip in a final question. So there is uh, concordance that it is the world's most trafficked animal. How close no, is the no, pangolin? No, no. It is not? No, so, sorry, Jeremy. I'm, I hate correcting you all the time. I sound like a schoolmaster, don't I? It's the world's most trafficked mammal. Mammal. I beg your pardon? I stand corrected again, Richard, and thank you. It's important that we get this okay. right. The question still remains, the world's most trafficked mammal. Now, how close to, it, or how close to extinction is it? Well, you know, the reason that Africa is being hit so hard is because, the, well, there are four species in Africa, four species in Asia. The reason that Africa is being hit so hard is because Asian species are now very, very rare. Uh, and they've declined uh, almost to local extinction in many, many places. Hence, the spotlight of the traffickers has, has moved itself to Africa. And I was only reading last week that in, um, in, the ca in Cameroon, uh, it's heading for local extinction. So... At the rate of attrition we've got, it can't be long before we start getting local extinctions all over Africa as well. The book is called Pangolin Scales of Injustice, and I thank the author, conservationist Richard Pierce, who's been speaking to us from the United Kingdom.